Yeah. What's up, guys? Long time no see. Where y'all been at? We've been looking at. Where y'all been at? Yeah. Been waiting, right? It's a whole new year. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, we've been living it up with the COVID. And, yes. Well, not in our house, but mm -hmm. you know. What I mean. We y'all know what we saying though. We've been yeah. surviving through the cold. We ain't had the COVID yet, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We got tested back to COVID like yes, yesterday. But we Negative. have been touring. Yes, have been touring. We had our working. holiday break. Yes. Uh, we've been busy. But we are back with a new episode of Cooking with Chinadu. And Amaris. We're back. Guess what we have today, y'all? We have actually two really delicious recipes um, to film today. The first one is going to be a slow cooker balsamic honey pulled pork sandwich. Slow cooked. <laughs> You're already slow roasted. <laughs> I got Marty wrong. Yeah. Slow cooker. Huh? Huh? Yes, but that was one. That's that's the baby. Yes, sorry. Slow cooker. Slow cooker. Balsamic. Balsamic. Honey. Honey. Pulled pork sandwich. Pulled pork sandwich. Slow cooker. Balsamic. Honey. Pulled pork sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to for your boy, man. I'm walk off with it, man. Our second recipe for today is going to be a super crispy loaded um, potato. So you know how you go to the restaurant, you get your nice little loaded potatoes, a little bacon, something mm -hmm. like that. So we're gonna do some special stuff with the actual potato itself to make it, you know, yeah. spruced up and extra tasty. These are all recipes for um, football season, right? Yep. Yeah, because correct. we're watching games, and for many of us, we're not going out to the sports bars and things like that. So let's bring that sportsy food in the house. Yeah, this is gonna be real good, y'all. Y'all ready? To the ingredients. <laughs> okay, for the ingredients for our pulled pork sandwich, we have about three, three to four pounds of um, pork shoulder right here. Um, I bought, bought this from the grocery store at seven pounds, almost eight pounds, and I just cut it in half, okay? Um, we also have some onions and we have some garlic. This is about half an onion and this is about five cloves of garlic. We kind of like that base, so I have bumped it up a little bit. We have some porcelain sauce, honey, some blackberry jam, some balsamic vinegar, chicken broth. These are all things that are gonna be needed for the full pork. Of course, you're gonna need a little bit of um, cornstarch for a slurry later to thicken up your sauce and make it nice and tasty, but you just kind of put that to the side. And for assembly of our sandwiches, we're gonna use some buns. We chose brioche buns because we love the bri the, the extra buttery taste. Um, and then I also did some um, slaw. Um, and I actually added a little bit of extra purple slaw because I like the extra crunch and I like the color, okay? Oh, and one other thing, our crock pot liner, save yourself some uh, cleaning time. All right, so let's assemble. So now we're going to um, get, our crock, get our pork shoulder into the crock pot. Um, I'm putting on gloves because I'm gonna be handling meat and that's, you know, for protocol. Um, my crock pot is set on low and I've already plugged it up and it's been getting um, hot. Now, let's get this crock pot liner in. The only purpose that this crock pot liner serves is to make cleanup easier for you. If you do not have one, you don't have to use it. You don't have to go out and buy them. I just find, especially when you get the sweeter, stickier glazes, my cleanup process um, is far more simplified. It does not interfere with how the items cook or anything. And this is, it's a purely optional thing and I just like it for easy cleanup, okay? So now we're gonna take our beautiful um, shoulder, place it right on in there, take our wonderfully smelling glaze, pour that right on over that pork shoulder. Get all the good stuff out. All right. That is beautiful. And this is going to cook for eight to nine hours on low. Oh, baby. Eight to nine hours? Yeah. Oh, we're ready in like 30 minutes. <laughs> no. What are we going to do for eight to nine hours? Cook some uh, loaded potatoes. Okay. Well, uh, actually, I know what else we could do. All right, so it has been all day. All day. 
and the pulled pork smells incredible. Hey! And, so good and I went in here, I looked at it, tested it with a fork to see if it's ready, and it is more than ready. So now we're ready to make our sauce, shred this thing down, mm. and we can move into assembly from there. Mm. All right, so let's do this. Ooh, let's see it. Ooh, look, it's already falling apart. <laughs> Let me put this. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in on that. Okay, so I got my tongue. This thing, um, it oh. falls apart by with touch. So yeah. we're gonna, I'm gonna have try my best to get it out of here. These special CIA tongs. I pray to God you don't drop it, y'all. Just special CIA tongs, you can't drop that. Pray to God you don't drop it. Lord yeah, have mercy. Yeah, it started falling Ooh. apart. Ooh. Hold on, wait, 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 let's zoom in. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Okay guys, so now we're ready to make our sauce. The point of the process, get this liquid from the cooked down pulled pork, get it into this pot. I like the flavor of the onion and garlic being in the pork. I don't necessarily want it in my sauce, but if that's your world, do what you want to do. Um, so I'm going to take the liquid, strain it out so that I get the, the chunky pieces of onion and garlic. And then we're going to take this thing to the stove, add in a slurry and make us a sauce. All right. So let's do it. So now we have our um, reserves liquid from the pulled pork and it's on the stove. Let's get that onto a nice medium heat. I also went ahead and took that cornstarch so that showed you in the ingredients. Added about three more tablespoons of water. Um, just kind of think of it as a one to three ratio. I'm using a really small container. Just put, th put three times the amount of, of water into that and use cold water. Um, I'm gonna pour that into here. We're gonna stir, stir it kind of bring it to a boil, let it thicken up, um, and we're gonna take it back and pour it on top of our pulled pork. While this is heating up, we're gonna put our pulled pork back into the crock pot, shred it up so that it'll be ready for when the, um, the sauce comes. Okay. So our sauce is kicking down. We're at that point where it's time to kind of do a taste test see if we like it. We've already tested the pulled pork. I feel like a little bit of salt and pepper is gonna be necessary for that. So we're gonna put that on there, but we're gonna taste our sauce as well. Be careful when you adjust the salt and the pepper because you don't wanna over salt, right? So let's get that in there. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, that's amazing. How does that, I don't feel like salt's needed for this. We are gonna put a little bit on the on the pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Let's turn that off and let's get it. Let's get it in. Okay. I'm doing this part, y'all. We are making super crunchy potatoes right here. Okay, here are our ingredients. Potatoes, of course. We got a little salt on them. You can see, see salt. Leo, stop. I got Leo in the background. He's he cutting up more about him. Got sour cream right here. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not from H-E-B. They ain't even know from Dill. No, stop asking me about it, okay? Tell them to give me a from Dill. I buy from H-E-B. So, okay, don't worry about that. Got the bacon, green onions, and some cheese. We're going to combine all these ingredients and make what? Super crunchy little potato. It's super crunchy potatoes. Super crunchy loaded potatoes. Super crunchy loaded potatoes, man. And there's what? also olive oil on there. And olive, oh sorry, and olive oil on I see, I was wondering why they were shiny. I thought we would yeah, just rinse them off. So, the, all olive oil on here too, with salt, uh, sour cream before, the bacon, of course. Of course, uh, green onions chopped, in, um, chopped. As you can see, finely chopped in, in a, a, a very a fine glass bowl here. Cheese, di a different kind. Um, mild white cheddar and a medium yellow cheddar. Mild. <laughs> a mild white cheddar. Mild white cheddar. And a medium yellow cheddar. And a medium yellow cheddar we have here. These are our ingredients. So we will. All right, let's go. 
Okay, so now we're doing our second recipe, the super crunchy loaded potatoes. And all you need for this one um, are some Idaho potatoes. I put a little bit of oil and salt on these to prepare them for the oven. I have some bacon. Um, you only really need um, four, four or five slices. It really depends on how much bacon you wanna put on your potato when you garnish it. We have um, some cheese. I have wild, I have white mild cheddar and yellow medium cheddar. And then I have some green onion and some sour cream. Feel free to go crazy with this. You can take some of the cool pork we're cooking and put on these. You can put jalapenos on there, put some avocados, make it your world. The big emphasis is just how we do the potatoes. And so that's where the works are. Um, the only thing you don't see here would be a little bit of water. But when we get to that step, I will bring that in. So the next step is to get our potatoes and our bacon in the oven. The oven has been preheated for 365 and they're gonna be in there for about 20 to 25 minutes. We wanna get our bacon crispy and get a nice chunk of the potato cooked before we do the crunchy frying process. So as you guys all just saw, there are two versions of how we just did the ingredients, okay? We're gonna do a poll in the comment section. Which one did you prefer more? Uh, Amherst is A, of course, and uh, I'm C for Chino, because it's, it's A for Amherst C for Chino. There is no, don't don't say B. There is no B, okay? It's A for Amherst C for Chino. Well, maybe they no. want to say both. Maybe they like both approaches. Oh, that's a cop-out. Yours is- Oh, that's a cop-out. Yours is funny, but mine actually gets the recipe done. I said everything in there. Don't, 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 did she really? don't go back and check. This is, this is, this is. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying something new. We wanted to see how Jenny did with um, handling a portion of the ingredients and instructions. When she asked me, I immediately started sweating. I was like, what? <laughs> No, what? I, asked, I asked her, I said, do you even know what this is? <laughs> I, didn't know. I, didn't, I didn't know the ingredients, y'all. I, I admit it, okay? I didn't know. I was off top of my head. I, you know, we check. I got the email. We check. I, I knew what we was making, but I didn't know all the greens off, off ahead. Put me on spot like that, you know. But let's still let us know, though. You know, so yeah, y'all can put B. Please put B. You since you fry plantain, when we get to the frying step, you can you can handle that, right? I can. Okay. Speaking of plantain, plantain is so good. Do do we need a plantain? Should we do a plantain? Do I need to drop a plantain video, y'all? But that's too many questions to, for the conversation. Just, just I just we'll just keep going. Just, just keep going. Okay, so we've pulled our um, potatoes and bacon out and they are beautiful, you'll see them in a second. What we've done to prep the oven for the potatoes to go back in, we're gonna put them, we're gonna set our oven for 375. Shouldn't take very long to preheat because your oven was already on 365. Uh, what I've also done is got a pot, put some oil in here. I'm using vegetable oil, feel free to use whatever you like as far as it being canola, corn, peanut. Um, I wouldn't recommend this with like olive oil because um, we're going to end up deep frying um, those potatoes in this oil. So we want to go ahead, get this fire going, kind of like medium to high heat, um, and let's go prep our potatoes. So now, you see this bacon cooked beautifully. It is perfectly crisp and straight. I'm gonna put it over here so that on these paper towels, so that it can drain. So we are going to slice them in half, and then we're going to scoop the filling out, the centers out, and put them into a bowl of a little bit of water. Now, let's talk about this water. You're basically about to make a coating for your potatoes using the inside. Um, we're only doing um, five potatoes, so you only really need the fillings of about three, maybe three and a half. Use the other, the leftovers for something else. Okay, so we have um, taken the center out and created that little hollow pocket. Hollow pocket. <laughs> we put 
uh, the centers in here. We did go ahead and put all of them in here because I figured I just don't use what I don't need. Um, and I also poured a few, little bit of the water off of the potatoes. Simple enough, it really wasn't that complicated. Uh, I'm gonna use my um, immersion blender to um, blend this down into a nice little batter, I guess. <laughs> Hey baby, why we got this food processor out right now? Yeah, so the immersion blender did not give us enough power to, to cook down these par cooked um, or par, par boiled um, potatoes. And so I'm switching over to my uh, food processor so that we can get this thing done quick and fast. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we are ready to fry these things down. We got our um, potatoes coated. I have um, a tray with a paper towel to drain once they come out of here. This, um, I can already tell that this heat is ready to go. Um, if you needed to test it, you can take like a little wooden skewer and it'll bubble up and all that good stuff. Um, but this has been heating so long, I almost am certain that it's ready. Okay, so now we take our potato. We kind of like, Tap it, make sure that the excess is off, and we drop it on in. Okay, so I've pulled the potatoes out of the grease. I think we got a good crunch. Ooh, you hear that crunch? Yeah, we got a pretty good crunch here. These cooked for uh, actually about 15 minutes um, to get them to this level. So now what I'm gonna do, get them, get the paper towel off the tray. We're gonna put the cheese on, get them into the oven for about 10 minutes, just long enough to get the cheese melted. And then we're gonna finish garnishing. Them. All right, guys, as you guys can hear, our babies in the background, so we don't have that much time left, though, so we got no time to take this bite, and you're not here to get back to being parents, okay? So we're gonna take this bite, we'll see how it tastes. You ready? You ready? Go ahead. I'll do a potato skin. Okay. Do you want to pull for it? See, I'm holding the burger episode. See how I'm holding it? We told y'all, y'all thought we was playing, huh? Thought you were like mediocre crisp? Nah, bro. Extra crispy. I jokingly said to him, like in post edit, say that it's medium crispy. Because <laughs> I didn't think that I got the potatoes crisp enough. But there is a little crisp in the skin. Not so much on the inside. But the, when you add that crunch of that bacon, that's where the super is going to definitely come in. Mm -hmm. it is really awesome. All right, y'all. Have a wonderful football season. Mm -hmm. um, Eat wonderful foods. Try out these recipes. We think you'll love them. My team may make it, but that's all good. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you guys see our baby came in the background right now. It's time for us to uh, get out of here and get back to being parents. Thank you all for tuning <laughs> in. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Cooking with Chinadu. And Amorous. See you guys next time. Bye.